with hope, with peace, with grace, with love on a national day of mourning as we keep vigil in prayer and shine a light ahead of the inauguration of the 46th president of the United States. We welcome you to Peace with Justice, a national prayer vigil. Um, my name is Reverend Adam Nicholas Phillips, uh, Executive Director of Faith 2020. Very um, heartened to be with such incredible leaders that have been choosing hope over fear these past days, weeks, months, and years, and will continue to do so beyond tomorrow as well. Um, we will be praying um, with voices from all across the country, from a multitude of traditions uh, in the Jesus tradition. And so we are so delighted that we have people coming together in this time to seek healing and peace with justice. Without further ado, um, I hand it over to my friend, Reverend Jim Wallace. Bless you all for joining us tonight. We just watched Centers of Light on the Reflecting Pond of the Lincoln Memorial. Very moving time to see and remember 40, 400,000 Americans who've lost their lives to COVID. Shining in the darkness and the silence, the light was there to see. Acknowledging our pain and our suffering. A service begun by Cardinal Wilton Gregory then a Michigan nurse, Lori Marie King, sang, Key sang Amazing Grace, which she sang in her Detroit COVID unit. Still the best words for this hour. Then the words of Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and President-elect Joseph Biden. Then the voice of Yolanda Adams singing Hallelujah. And I was struck by a quote that got lifted up tonight in the coverage apparently put on the mirror in Joe Biden's home by his wife after losing his son, Bo, which is from Soren Kierkegaard, which says, faith sees best in the dark. Faith sees best in the dark. A moving beginning. Now we pray tonight for a light that can shine in the darkness in this nation. We will pray in three segments. First, for elected officials, second for the church, third for the nation and the world. Uh, let me introduce the faith leaders who will pray in the first segment, who will play, who will pray one after the other. Reverend Gabriel Saguero, president, National Latino Evangelical Coalition. Dr. Terry Horde Owens, President, Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. Reverend Eugene Chow, President, Bread for the World. Reverend Frederick A. Davey, Union Theological Seminary. Reverend Tracy Blackman, Associate General Minister, United Church of Christ. Reverend Alexia Salvatore, Mateo 25 and Fuller Seminary. Reverend Dr. Walter Kim, President, National Association of Evangelicals, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, Presiding Bishop and Primate of the Episcopal Church, Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III, Senior Pastor, Trinity United Church of Christ, Chicago, and the Reverend Carlos Molave, Executive Director, Christian Churches Together in the USA. They will all pray one after the other. Let me begin with a prayer. We pray this evening for every, for the president, for the vice president, for every senator, member of Congress, governor, mayor, county and city official. We pray they would all understand the importance of the words of Jesus when he said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. This nation is bound by lies that have led us to fear and hatred and violence. So we pray tonight for every elected official that they will help shine light into the darkness by remembering those words of Jesus, 
You will know the truth and the truth will make you free as our elected leaders find the strength to say and show and act on those words of Jesus so that we might be free. Thank you, Jim, and I'm so honored to join all of you. I'm the Reverend Gabriel Salguero, president of the National Latino Evangelical Coalition, and I'm coming directly from Orlando, Florida, just outside our worship service. Let us pray. God of our weary years and God of our silent tears, we pray now for the new Congress who's coming in and the new presidential administration, President-elect Joseph Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. We are mindful that we have lost 400,000 people, men, women, children, elderly. We ask you, O oh God, to comfort us in our mourning, to be light in the midst of our pain. And God, we ask you that as these elected officials come to office, that they would be mindful of the admonition of the prophet that says, we are called to do justice to love mercy and to walk humbly before our God. And so God, I ask you to give them the wisdom to do justice, the compassion to love mercy and the integrity to not let the power reach their heads, to walk humbly before their God. I pray this believing in the matchless name of Jesus, amen. Hello, I'm the Reverend Terry Horde Owens, General Minister and President of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, make your face shine upon those whom we have elected to office. We lift up our new president, Joe Biden, and our new vice president, Kamala Harris, to you. We lift up those who are elected as senators and representatives. We ask you to bless those elected to serve states, counties, municipalities. Wherever they serve, oh God, may their hearts be for the people. May they be attuned to the cries of the poor, to those who are marginalized, to those who are oppressed by racism, misogyny, xenophobia, homophobia, economic disparity. May these elected leaders never fail to listen May they never fail to speak truth to power. May they always call for justice to roll down like mighty waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Give them like Nehemiah the courage to stay on the wall, to keep working and never be distracted, to never turn back, to commit themselves to work together to build a nation where all have enough. Lead and guide each one, O oh God, is our prayer to act with love and with courage. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray, amen. Yes, sisters and brothers, my name is Reverend Eugene Cho. I'm the president of Bread for the World and I'm joining you in prayer from Seattle, Washington. Once more, let us pray. Gracious God of grace, mercy, and truth, we come to you in prayer. In the season of loss, we lament, but we also hold on to hope. We're reminded of the words of the Holy Scriptures from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. It is in the name of Christ that we gather with hope. And as we look to him, we also pray for our fellow brothers and sisters who are called into service in our respective government. We thank you again for President-elect Joe Biden, for Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and their respective families. We pray for their beloved spouses, their children and grandchildren. We pray for strength and grace and protection for them 
during this unprecedented time. God, we know even for a glimpse that there is a cost and a burden to leadership. And so we do pray for wisdom, discernment, and moral courage as they continue to lead. And as we pray for them, we pray for the members of the new administration, new members of Congress, and yes, even for every single member of our Congress and government, especially during this divided time. God, may you grant unto them the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, convict them and us to put our faith into action, strengthen each of our elected leaders to speak up for those whose voices are not heard or their plights ignored. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters, colleagues. My name is the Reverend Fred Davey, and I am the Executive Vice President at Union Theological Seminary in New York. And I'm so pleased to be here with you tonight. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and merciful God, I pray that President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris, the Congress and all elected officials have the courage to look deeply at the economic dis disparities that exist in this nation. I pray that they will take seriously how economic hardship erodes the soul when people are worried about how, how, how they will feed their children provide health care, and put food on the table. Help our elected officials to resist economic powers that seek to accumulate and hoard at the expense of the least, the lost, and the left out. May our elected leaders be inspired by our president and vice president to put the least of these at the head of the line for relief and comfort. Now, O oh God, grant us wisdom and grant us courage for the facing of this hour and the living of these days. In your wonderful, majestic, and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. My name is Reverend Tracy Blackman. I am the Associate General Minister of Justice and Local Church Ministries for the United Church of Christ. Please join me in prayer. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Holy one, no matter what office we hold, we acknowledge gratefully that we are all your people, that we are all called by your name. My prayer, God, is for those who have been elected to serve in offices that sit high, that they not only look low, but they look eye to eye with those who are hurting in this nation, those who have been dismissed, those who have been left out, those who have had to sit with those who are dying. God, we ask right now that you remind them that first they are your people and that we are all your people, shaped in your image and filled with your breath, that they might humble themselves, that they might continue to pray, to have their ear to your heart, to listen to your guidance, to seek your face, and if they do these things, God, I am sure that we can heal our land, cover them and surround them. Don't let them stray. This is my prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. I am the Reverend Dr. Alexia Salatierra. I'm representing Fuller Theological Seminary and Matthew 25, Mateo 25. Psalm 72 is a prayer for the king, but it also works today 
for all elected officials. Please join me in praying a few sentences of Psalm 72. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor, for he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Lord, we are so grateful that you have called our elected leaders to see every human being as precious. We pray this prayer in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Greetings. I'm Reverend Dr. Walter Kim, President of the National Association of Evangelicals. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, the scriptures declare that you are the blessed and only ruler, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We know that nations rise and nations fall, but you alone shall endure from everlasting to everlasting. And so we rightly humble ourselves before you. We recognize that hope is the companion of humility. And we hold on to the promise that you have given to us in the prophet Isaiah that though you are high and exalted and live in a high and holy place, you are also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. So we humble ourselves before you and confess our need. We are brokenhearted at the divisions that plague our nation and that have festered in deep disdain. We grieve the loss of life and the confrontation of many more months of this pandemic and the history that we have that has been scarred by sin, even as it is filled with hope. So we pray. We pray not in despair, but in humility, confronting the limits of our wisdom. And we ask for our leaders to forge a just peace to bind our wounds that Republicans and Democrats and independents would join together in this great task. Who can adequately lead this nation? We need your grace. I pray in particular for the elected officials who claim you, Jesus. May they follow in the footsteps of Christ who came not to be served, but to serve even at the cost of his own life. Lord, by your grace and wisdom, guide us in these coming years that the leaders may lead in such a manner that we are bound together under your grace, pursuing your wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hello, I'm Bishop Michael Curry, presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. Sovereign Lord God, you have taught us in your holy word that to love you, our God, and to love our neighbor as ourselves is indeed to fulfill your law, indeed to live your will, the essence of what it is to follow in your way. We pray now, Lord, teach us to love unselfishly, sacrificially, seeking the good of others, even beyond our own good. Teach our leaders to lead by love. Teach us to follow in love. Your children are hurting in this world and in this country, Lord. Teach us to love, to help, and to heal. Some of your children are hungry, Lord. Teach us to help, to love, 
and to heal. Many are struggling, Lord. Many are afraid, lonely, and frightened. Teach us to help, Lord, to love and to heal. There's violence in the land, injustice and a discordant spirit in the land. Teach us to help, Lord, to love and to heal. Teach our leaders to love. Grant them and grant us your loving, liberating, and life-giving spirit. Move our hearts and then show us the way to break down barriers that divide, to make suspicions disappear and hatreds to cease. There are divisions being healed, wrongs being righted. We may learn to live in justice, love, and peace. This we ask and pray in the name of your son, Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I'm Otis Moss, a pastor at Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago, Illinois. Let us pray together at this moment. As we search for stability in the darkness we created, may your spirit of holy mischief meet us when our political arrogance attempts to marry human ignorance. Let the light of your wisdom birthed by the midwives of humility and compassion shine upon every elected official. Forgive us for our civic dementia where we forget about our yesterday and repeat the same failures in our present and our future. May your spirit shine upon us so that we may create a future that is not yet, but will be as we trust in you. Break our addiction to Confederate myths of marginalization. Break our addiction to a mythic past that never was, that we may create a future that shall be. We offer this prayer and this blessing upon those who enter the halls of power, that they may be humble and receive thy wisdom. We offer this in the name of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. I am the Reverend Carlos Malave, Executive Director of Christian Churches Together in the USA. Let us pray. Soberano del Universo, te bendecimos, te exaltamos, te glorificamos. Sovereign Lord, we praise you, we exalt you, we glorify you. We make a stop in our journey tonight. And even though our hearts are burdened with pain, at the same time, there's also joy. So we also celebrate tonight. We come as one people to pray for President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris. Protect them. Protect them from the evil one. Protect them from any physical harm. We entrust them in your hand. Give them wisdom. Give them courage. But above all, give them a tender heart towards the poor and towards the forgotten. Continue to inspire them to persist in seeking to unite our nation, which is so divided. We also pray for Leader Schumer and, and Leader Pelosi. 
give them wisdom. I even pray tonight for my Senator Mitch McConnell and for all his Republican friends, legislators, senators, representatives. May they yield their influence for the good of the American people. Lord, grant all your protection to President Joe Biden. Give him strength and in strength understanding and in understanding wisdom and knowledge, particularly the knowledge of justice and in the knowledge of justice, the love of it. And in the love of it, the love of all who cry out to you. And in that love, the renewal of the spirit of our nation. We pray this in the name of your son, the Christ. Amen. Amen. My name is Dr. Barbara William Skinner and I'm co-convener of the National African American Clergy Network of Denominations and Independent Churches. And when the church built on the death, life and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be salt and light in the world's darkness seems to have lost its own way. And when the church called to bear witness of the saving grace and mercy of a loving God retreats into warring camps by race or other factors, pointing fingers rather than showing the way to peace with justice. And when the church call to demonstrate the greatest commandment to love every neighbor as we love ourselves blocks the doors of full citizenship to Americans of color and become loyal to the empire rather than the cross. It's time for all of God's people to pray. I'm honored tonight to offer a short prayer for the church followed immediately by faith leaders with reputation, long reputation of shining light and darkness. My prayer will be immediately followed by that of Bishop Adam J. Richardson, Reverend Jennifer Butler, Dr. Cynthia Hale, Bishop Claude Alexander, Shane Cl Claiborne, the Reverend Dr. Joanne Lyon, and the Reverend Dr. W. Franklin Richardson, let us pray. True and living God, who stepped out on nothing and created everything, Lord, we bow our hearts, minds, and spirits before you tonight. For it's in your hands that you have all power and possibility. Lord, we, your church, are the people called by your name. So we come tonight humbling ourselves and praying and seeking your face for a divided, fear-filled, and hurting America, mil militarized in ways not seen since the Civil War, in conflict over the same issue, full citizenship of people of color. Forgive us, your church, call to model your love, grace, and mercy to people of every background now more separated than ever. Help us, oh God, to turn from our wicked ways of not seeing, loving, and caring for brothers and sisters of every background, the way you love us. So tonight, Lord, we come seeking your promise to hear from heaven on our behalf and heal our hurting land. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Bishop Richardson. I'm A.J. Richardson, Senior Bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church and the presiding bishop of the 11th Episcopal District headquartered in Jacksonville, Florida. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful that we are aware of your continuing presence that you are still here from eternity to pass, and you still hear even our faintest cry. Here's what we know and believe, that you are God alone, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. 
We are especially grateful that we would be allowed to see a brand new year, the beginning of a brand new era of leadership in America. We are thankful for the prospects of what the new year might bring, peace and hope and promise and possibility, because we are hopeful despite what we've seen in recent days, and we cannot unsee what we've seen these things call us to holy vigilance. We honor, laud, esteem, and magnify you, O God, for the places and spaces and virtual platforms made sacred by our collective intent to worship, to reflect, to contemplate, and for rich koinonia. We thank you for the church that also calls us to act redemptively with the beloved community as our goal, a goal that aligns with your kingdom objectives on earth as it is in heaven. It is a call for a two-fisted gospel of salvation and liberation. On the eve of a new day in America, new leadership on the world stage among the community of nations, new policy interests, new temperament, God, we say thank you. But God, we long for the day when we can flood the open door of the sanctuary once again. Mm -hmm. We long for music and song and singing once again. Mm -hmm. Not as entertainment, but as nourishment for our souls. And the open Bible on altars and pulpits that will call our attention to your insistence that justice matters. Help us to discover those passages. We long to hear prophetic preachment that authentically illumines your point of view and that gives us our worldview of peace with justice. And God, may this be the witness of your church in this space and time, peace, with justice. And we pray in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus, the living and loving Christ. Amen. Hello, I am the Reverend Jennifer Butler, the CEO of Faith and Public Life. Let's pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for your gift, the church tonight, for our spiritual ancestors, as well as those who come after we are gone, that we are not alone, that we join a cloud of witnesses tonight. Lord, you have given us the truth, the truth that will set us free, the truth that Jesus, not Caesar, is Lord. And so we come before you tonight in this moment of transition, and we ask that you reveal to us who we might become when, as the church, we invest utterly in your truth. What might we, the churches of America, become at this moment when our brokenness has been revealed, in this moment in which half of America is captivated by Christian nationalism? Embolden us, Lord. Reveal to us what we are and what we must become, for we must seize this moment, this calm in the eye of the storm, to surge forward in truth in love and in justice, to pour out all we have for the sake of your truth and for the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I am Cynthia Hale, the senior pastor of the Ray of Hope Christian Church. Pray with me. God of peace and God of love, it is my joy to intercede for the church birth out of your son's sacrifice and the word of promise that upon the rock of our confession of faith in him, he would build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And while the gates of hell cannot prevail against us, God, we must confess that we have allowed competing ideologies and beliefs, prejudices and politics, lies and labels to separate and divide us keeping us from living out your mandate to be light and love in the world. Forgive us, O oh God, 
and remind us that Christ is our peace, who has made us one and torn down all the walls that separate us. Help us, O oh God, to courageously reclaim our oneness in him so that we might live and love and work together and provide the perfect model of unity that you desire for our nation and world. It's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Father, we pray, continuing, that you will make your love and our love for one another and for all people grow. Make our love for one another within the body and for those outside of the body, make it grow and overflow. Just as our love for you overflows. Father, may, may you cause us and your work in us, cause our hearts to be strong blameless and holy, not just as we stand in this world, but one day we will stand before you, our Father, when our Lord Jesus comes again with all of his holy people. May we be able to stand before you knowing that we've made our stand in this world as you would have it. May you make it so. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My name is Shane Claiborne from Red Letter Christians. And as I lead us in this prayer for the church, the words of Dr. King are on my heart when he said that the church is not meant to be the servant or the master of the state, but the conscience, the conscience of a state. And so God, I pray today that uh, as your church, we would be your prophetic conscience, that we would uh, stir this nation with love, that we would not be the chaplains of empire, but the prophets of resistance. And so I pray for your church that we would have your prophetic imagination, not to accept the world as it is, but to imagine the world as it should be. For we know that the prophets were not fortune tellers, but truth tellers, that they weren't just predicting the future, but they were trying to change it. And oh God, we pray that we would be your prophetic conscience, that we would be able to imagine a nation and a world where every person has this day their daily bread, where the sick are cared for, where the stranger is welcome where those in prison we consider as if we ourselves were in prison with them. So help us imagine a future where death has lost its sting, oh God, where lives, a hundred lives a day are not lost to gun violence. Uh, help us imagine a world where poverty is ended, uh, where the death penalty is abolished, where abortion is rare, where black lives matter, Help us to imagine a world where we study war no more and we beat our swords into plows. Help us to imagine a nation where the last are first and the first are last, where the mighty come down from their thrones and the lowly are lifted up. Oh God, help us to imagine America as you want it to be. May your kingdom come and your will be done. May we be the midwives of your kingdom. Amen. Amen. I'm Joanne, Reverend Joanne Lyon, General Superintendent Emerita of the Wesleyan Church. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we are reminded tonight your words for the, your church in this world. And your words were that we would be one and that would, we would be in unity. But Lord, tonight we confess to you, we have been divisive. We are divided. 
we need to be in unity. We repent of the division that when we should have been leading in these days, we have been divided. We repent of our racism, we repent of, of prejudices, we repent of haughty spirits, competition, anger, and all that is not of you. And many more things, but we ask forgiveness tonight, dear Lord. We ask you to give us ears to hear, to obey in ways that are how you are calling us to live. And you said, if we are in unity and one in your prayer, your glory would be seen on this earth. We want to see your glory revealed in all the prayers that have been prayed prior. Your glory would shine in this. And the world would know that uh, we are one. And they would point to you, our Savior and our Redeemer. We ask for courage to live as you taught us. We ask that we will be peacemakers, not peacekeepers. Give us the courage to be the peacemakers that we need to be. These are, this is a repentance. It is asking forgiveness. And Lord, you said you would forgive if we repent. And so tonight with the hundreds and hundreds of people on this call, may we realize that we are your church in the world today that's needed more than ever before and that we will be united and we will be in unity and we will follow the prayer that you prayed in the 17th chapter of John that will give glory to you in all that you want us to do and to be. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus, amen. I am uh, Reverend Franklin Richardson, Senior Pastor of Grace Baptist Church and Chairman of the Conference of National Black Churches. Won't you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we the church tonight begin by thanking you for what you have already brought us through. We thank you for our long journey of vigilance from the beginnings of recorded time up until the last four years, these four years that you have kept us in spite of the challenges, in spite of the evil, in spite of the division, in spite of all of the hatred, we come tonight to say thank you, that you have, a, you have delivered us on the border of a new future and a pregnant promise. Lord, help us to not delegate to you the things that we ought to do. Help us to not make our prayers simply delegation of responsibility for the things that your church ought to be engaged in. Help us, God, to make the church a headlight and not the taillight. Help us not to just be responders, but to be healers, to be engaging and challenging. And then, God, not only do we ask you to be with us in the days ahead, help us to stand and live out the prayers we prayed. May our prayers inform our behavior. May the way we treat each other in the prayer language be exhibited in our functions and how we deal with one another and how we advocate for justice and equality. We thank you tonight, God, that we have the privilege to be connected with each other in spite of the various and many things that would disconnect us from each other. We ask tonight that you would give us fresh courage and new faith and enlivened hope that we may go into the days ahead trusting and believing in you and acting as you would have us to. We pray your blessing upon our new president and vice president, upon all of us, citizens of America, who are participants in bringing about a new day and a better, a better time. We pray this prayer in the name of a living God, who is Jesus our Christ. Amen.
My name is Reverend Adam Russell Taylor. I have the privilege of serving as the president of Sojourners. We're so grateful that you've joined with us in prayer tonight. The theme and focus of tonight's prayers is peace with justice. We remember the timeless words of Dr. Martin Luther King, who said that peace isn't the absence of tension, but the presence of justice. We believe that for our nation and world, this is a moment not for cheap grace or cheap justice, but with a peace with justice that requires truth telling, requires repentance and lament. It requires healing and reconciliation that is rooted in a commitment to justice. We know that our nation faces extraordinary challenges ahead. A pandemic that has already claimed over 400,000 lives, 2 million across the world, and has caused catastrophic economic hardship. We face alarming hunger and malnutrition, a deeply divided and polarized nation, the impending existential threat of climate change, the entrenched and pervasive virus of systemic racism, an escalating crisis of mental health, suicide and addiction, but we believe that even in the midst of these formidable challenges, that we serve a God that can make all things new and can make all things possible, even in a broken and divided nation. Our nation and world face what feels like an inflection point, maybe even a Kairos moment, a moment of courage, a moment of conscience and of sound decision. We must decide what kind of nation we aspire to be, Will we be willing to repent for the contradictions and injustices of our past and our present? Will we embrace a radically more inclusive and just multiracial democracy? Will we overcome the toxic polarization that so often is fueled by an us versus them, zero sum mentality? Will we replace a politics of vitriol, enmity and mendacity with a politics of empathy, civility and the common good? I pray that our answers are resounding yes. Let us work together to replace a misplaced focus on making America great again with the bold focus and work of building the beloved community. Let us co-create an America in which neither punishment nor privilege is viciously tied to skin color, gender, race, or sexual orientation. An America where everyone is seen, everyone is valued, everyone is heard, and everyone can thrive an America in which we finally reject the lie that some people are more valuable than others and that some people are more American than others. A nation and a world in, that respects and affirms the dignity of every person who is made in the very likeness and image of God. I am gonna close in a very brief word of prayer, but I am excited to invite a group of prayer warriors who will also be praying for our nation and our world. You will hear from Sister Simone Campbell, Reverend Dr. Ivor Carruthers, Jim Winkler, Reverend Jeffrey Hagray, Reverend Dr. Starsky Wilson, Bishop Lawrence Reddick, Nikki Tayoma Seto, and Commissioner Kenneth G. Hodder, and finally, Cecilia Williams. And let, let us join together as I open this section in a word of prayer. God, you are the author and, perf and perfecter of our faith. We thank you that as we look forward to tomorrow, that you have promised to make all things new. We need that newness in our nation and our world right now as we face the formidable challenges ahead of us. God, we pray that you would be our bridge over troubled waters, that you would be our rock in a weary land. We pray that we would be so filled with what ought to be that it could replace the brokenness of what is. Lord, fill us with your call to hesed, to tzedek, and to mishfat, to steadfast love, to righteousness, and to, just, to justice. We ask that you would work in and through us to be your reconcilers, to be your peacemakers, to be your instruments of justice. We thank you for all that you continue to do in and through us and for all of the promise and hope that is ahead. It's in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and liberator, we pray, amen. It's, it's such an honor to be with you all this evening. <clears throat> I'm so moved by all these words and all of the passion behind them. 
I come to pray for our nation and our world as an advocate. And I advocate before the divine and before you, but tonight I just want to bring the reality of this time. The fact that I take comfort in the very first paragraph of the first book of the Hebrew scriptures in Genesis, where it says that the spirit breathes over the waters of chaos and brings forth a new creation. And so this evening, I pray, O oh spirit, move over the waters of chaos of our time and bring forth something new. Bring forth our capacity to end this structural racism that is so crippling our society. Break, bring forth our capacity to end the white supremacy and the reality of white privilege and only allow all to experience the same level of privilege. Bring forth from this chaos the reality that we mourn tonight for those who have died, those who have died because of the coronavirus, those who have died in violence, those who have died unnecessarily. Bring forth a new creation that we might heal our planet and be our better selves. I beg you, O oh Spirit, O oh, Spirit, bring forth in us a new vision that speaks truth, that welcomes the stranger, even if they disagree with us, that ensures that we build this bridge to a new reality where all can live in dignity, where we can create legislation that actually works for the common good, where the hungry are fed and the lame can get healthcare treatment and the vaccine is distributed fairly and our hearts are broken open. Let us be your people with broken open hearts that can welcome in and embrace all who would be left out. Let us be inclusive in ourselves, in our nation, in our policies, and most of all, in our care. Oh, Spirit, make us open to the fullness of all of your work in our midst. We trust you, we live in you, and we will move forward together into this new creation and let the people say, amen. Amen. I am Reverend Iva Carruthers and I serve as the general secretary of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. Pray with me, beloved family. From generation to generation, everlasting and most loving and merciful God, we come to you as a people of faith and of your will. We come knowing that what matters here matters throughout the world. We come this evening with the prophetic words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King in our hearts who said that the judgment of God is upon us and we must either learn to live together as brothers or we are going to perish together as fools. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the abandonment of your ways and your will. Lord, we are witnesses to your promises that weeping may endure for a night, but we know that joy will come in the morning. And so we stand in holy hope asking that you order our steps to reimagine and to remake a world of justice and peace. We believe God, we believe, and so we pray. We pray with the heart and the experiences of a people who know that you will have the last word. 
a position may give some power, but you have all the power in your hands. A pardon of this world may set some free, but all judgment and mercy is in thy hands. A few hopeful and faithful of your people just gathered at the reflection pool at the Lincoln Memorial. And we, we who are here are strengthened and claim the victory and the healing because we believe and know what you did at the pool of Bethesda. And so heal us, O oh Lord. And may the lights that shine and the bells that ring all over this nation this night affirm the power and presence of your Holy Spirit and a new way forward in every village, in every neighborhood, in every hamlet and community of this, your world. Amen and I shed. Amen. My name is Jim Winkler, and I serve as President and General Secretary of the National Council of the Churches of Christ in the USA. Let us pray. Tonight, our most fervent and heartfelt prayers go forth from this vigil as we beseech God's help. We are a nation and a world in need of healing, healing from the pandemic that has ravaged our people disrupted normal life and claimed the lives of millions across the globe. Healing from racial and economic injustice and healing for our planet from the damage we have inflicted on it. We ask this night for divine guidance for those in positions of power and respect the world over. Grant special knowledge and faith to them when decisions must be made about war and peace, about control and consequences, about morality that informs politics and economics. In these perilous times, when mistrust and misunderstanding roam the world over, and we are surrounded by darkness and doubt, guide our leaders in government, guide our nurses and doctors, guide our bishops and pastors, guide our faithful lay leaders and guide those who teach our children. And let us never forget, God is in us, God is with us, God is for us, God works through us, and where God is, God always wins in the end. Amen. Executive Director of American Baptist Home Mission Societies. Let us continue in prayer. O Lord, our Lord, the psalmist has said righteousness lifts up a nation, but human sin, corruption, and evil bring reproach. We pray tonight for the United States of America and for our global community as we come together in the spirit of humility, in a posture of prayer, determined to turn from injustice and seeking your holy face, that you will have mercy upon us, forgive us, and bring healing and reconciliation among us. We confess that by so many measures related to justice, equity, compassion and peace, our nation has fallen short of your vision for us. And so we repent. We confess this to you and we confess the same to one another. We ask your forgiveness and we beg for mercy, forgiveness and grace on behalf of all your children from all walks of life all age categories from childhood to older adult, every background, culture, creed, and political persuasion, Lord, we seek mercy and grace. We pray especially for deliverance and healing from the coronavirus pandemic. 
And we ask for mercy and grace upon all those who mourn the loss of loved ones, for all those who are seeking healing and recovery from illness in their bodies. We pray for healing from racism, sexism, environmental injustice, and all forms of injustice, marginalization, and oppression. We pray for a new era with the inauguration on tomorrow of President-elect Biden and President-elect, uh, uh, Pre Vice President-elect Harris. Grant us courage, grant us vision, divine cleansing from sin, grant us strength that we will write a new, a just and more inclusive future story for America. Help us to reach across the differences that divide us and to find fresh ways to build your beloved community on earth as it is in heaven. Finally, help us to love all people, inclusive of all our identities and differences. In the name of the Holy Creator God, the risen Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to unmute yourself. Mute it. You may be experiencing some technical difficulty. We'll hopefully come back to him. Bishop Lawrence Reddick, would you please go ahead and offer your prayer? Uh, I am Lawrence Reddick. I serve as senior bishop of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Let us pray. Lord, God of the universe, we bow in prayerful submission before you because you are light and life because you are the source of all that exists and your consistent love endures forever. God, make known your desires for this nation and for the world of nations and clans and families. May we be true to the vision you project before us. And may we be committed and creative enough to put forward the plans and strategies and resources to make into reality your vision for the world. Grant that we who believe in you and we who trust you will exhibit your mercy, your compassion, your sense that as we have done it to whomever is the least of our brothers and sisters, we have done it, whatever that it is, to you. Sensitize us to the needs for food, for health, for nurture, for embrace, for inclusion, and for respect. Lord, in your mercy and through your grace, equip us, guide us, yes, constrain us when constraint is needed and push us forward when we are too cautious. Grant us your wisdom and your courage and your peace that our living and coexisting and cooperating may bring glory to your name. Through the authority of the name of Jesus, we pray, amen.
Amen. My name is Nikki Toyama Sito, and I'm the Executive Director for Christians for Social Action. Let's pray. Jesus, today we are praying for your world. And as you are the perfect intercessor, would you give us your prayers for your world? Jesus, we pray that all in the world might know that it is in you that we live and that we move and have our being. But we particularly pray for those who are vulnerable. Lord, we pray for the invisible. We pray for the invisible, the nameless, those who have to live in the in-between places and who live in the shadows. We pray to you, Lord, because you are the God who sees. You are the God who calls us and knows our name. Lord, we pray for those without a place to stay, without food or without family this day. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you would be God to them. We pray and ask that this would be the day that everyone might eat. Lord, we pray for those who are crushed by economic systems, by political systems, by cultural systems. Lord, we pray to you because you are the God who turns tables in the court, courtyard, you are the one who can shake off and break up oppressive systems. Lord, we pray that instead of building our foundations on these oppressive systems, that we might build the foundations of our society upon you and you as a sure foundation. We pray all these things to you, God, because you are just, you are able, you are compassionate, and you are kind. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, everyone. From the National Guard Armory in the District of Columbia, I'm Commissioner Ken Hodder of the Salvation Army. Wherever you are in this nation tonight, whatever you're doing, I invite you to pause for a moment and with confidence in your mind, faith in your spirit, and hope in your heart. Join me as we pray as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good evening. Friends in Christ, I am Reverend Cecilia Williams, the President and CEO of Christian Community Development Association. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. We trust with deep conviction that you have heard the petitions, the pleas, the intercession of your people this night, as we have lifted a collective unified voice, a concert of prayer on behalf of our leaders, our churches, our nation, and our world. We have pled, O oh God, for the healing of the nations for the healing of our nation, for the light which overcomes darkness and the love which drives out hate. And now, as we emerge from this space, grant us, O oh God, the resolve to confront truthfully the dark history of this nation, which has not as yet been reconciled the courage to catapult our faith into substantive action and a holy unwillingness to settle for pseudo peace, a peace which is divorced from justice, 
O oh God, our help in ages past, be our guide while this life lasts. Your arm is sufficient forevermore. Therefore, we know our defense is sure. Thank you for these leaders tonight. Thank you for these prayers. Thank you for all of the words which have been spoken. Now we step back and ask you to speak. Speak, O oh Lord, for your servants are listening. This we pray in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Reverend Starsky, I don't know if you're able to offer your prayer now. Sure, sure. If you can hear me, I'll go ahead. I can hear you, go for it. I'm Starsky Wilson. I'm honored to serve as president and CEO of the Children's Defense Fund. Uh, I join in this time to invite you to a posture of prayer. Dear God, we come making intercession. In the words of Ina Hughes, we pray for children who bring us sticky kisses and fistfuls of dandelions, who sleep with the cat and bury goldfish, who hug us in a hurry and forget their lunch money, who squeeze toothpaste all over the sink, who slurp their soup. And we pray for those who never get dessert, who have no safe blanket to drag behind them, who watch their parents watch them die, who can't find any bread to steal, who don't have any rooms to clean up, whose pictures aren't on anyone's dresser, whose monsters are real. We come making intersection for 74 million children in America under the age of 18. We pray for the 30 million young adults under the age of 25. We pray for the most diverse generation in American history. We pray for those who are the promise of multiracial democracy and the beloved community manifest in our very lifetimes. We come making intercession for children, but we also come making petition. We come petitioning, dear God, in the words of the prayers of the church that you place a hedge of protection around them. And we pray that you place a path of preparation before them. And we pray that you place people who are empowered around them to create the conditions whereby they might thrive. We come making petition for a nation where marginalized children flourish, where leaders prioritize their well being, and where communities wield the power to make sure that they thrive. We come making intercession and we come making our petitions, but we don't come only asking in prayer, we come making commitment. We come this day on the eve of inauguration and the transition to administration, we commit not to delegate or to outsource responsibility for making America over again to those in the White House or those on Capitol Hill, we commit that we will not forget the 74 million people who did not get to vote, even though they are whole humans just because they're under the age of 18. We commit that we will be their lobby and we will be their advocates and we will be their standard bearers. We commit that when we go in to vote, we won't forget our children and we won't let our leaders leave them behind. We commit that we will put back together the broken pieces of the shattered American dream. And we will do so in the form and the fashion of the beloved community. We commit, dear God, to center children in the same way you did when you taught us, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of heaven. We commit to get out of their way. We commit to come to you with the humility and in the posture of a little child that we might be able to enter the promise of the kingdom of the Basileia of God that you have made, declared, and preached before us. We commit 
to follow in the path of that Palestinian poor preacher from the wrong side of the track and turn the world upside down with the small group of young people called disciples in our care. We come making intercession, we come making petition, but we also come making commitment to be your people, to allow you to be our God and to model that before our children, for we know that they are watching. These and all things we pray, standing in, standing with, standing behind and standing for our children in Jesus name, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. So grateful for all of you that have joined us tonight. So grateful for all of the ecumenical Christian leaders that have taken the time tonight to engage together in prayer. It was a minor miracle to be able to gather this group within the same hour. And to be honest, a minor miracle that we stayed almost within an hour. And so I just want to virtually thank all of the prayer warriors tonight. It was certainly a balm for my soul. And I believe the perfect way to pray in a new administration, a new Congress, and pray in transformational change in this nation and world. Dr. Martin Luther King once said that to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Well, we did some breathing tonight. And breathing, prayer is like oxygen for the future of our nation. And so let us continue to pray together for a more just and hopeful tomorrow. We pray that you would engage with us tomorrow in what's called a thunderclap. Uh, for those of you who have Twitter accounts, we pray that you would use the hashtag, hashtag peace with justice from nine o'clock all the way through the inauguration so that we could exchange messages and make a resounding noise of hope and of transformation and change. So please, uh, you can find out more information at peacewithjustice.org. I'm gonna turn it to my other co-conveners, Dr. Barbara William Skinner, and then Reverend Jim Wallace to say a quick closing word of thank you. And then we will close our evening together. Dr. Skinner. My heart is filled with such joy for the powerful and uh, prophetic words uh, tonight. Uh, I, my prayer is that we will on this call be so powerfully moved ourselves that we commit uh, to move outside of our racial and cultural comfort zones, uh, to reach out to people and build new relationships uh, so that when people who don't know Jesus look at us, they, they can understand what we mean when we say that Jesus is Lord, that Lord of our lives, Lord of all that we are. And maybe that means it has to begin with this diverse body, having honest dialogues about what it really means to achieve what Adam just called um, the beloved community, what would that look like in our time? And not to put it off to a bunch of words into the future, but to say right now with every Zoom call, who else can I begin to bring into my circle who I may not feel politically that comfortable with, but they also have named the name of Jesus. This is our challenge tonight. I am so grateful for all of you who took the time to join us in this call. Uh, know that you made a difference and that this is the way we may need to begin seeing our time this year, not just praying when a president comes in, but all the way through where prayer has got to become a way of life for all of us. Jim Wallace. So there's no benediction tonight, rather a send off, not a benediction but a send off, our hearts and minds are full. We have been lifted up by all the prayers of our sisters and brothers. Now we go into days to quote our leader whom we have just remembered in these past days, go into difficult days ahead. 
difficult and dangerous days ahead. And so in a nation that is in bondage to lies and idols, big lies like stolen elections, but bigger lies like white supremacy, the only way to be set free is to know the truth, says our Lord. That means for us to speak it and live it and act out of it. Prayer is action. So we call on all of you, I think there are thousands out there tonight, to go now into these days ahead, lifting up this nation in prayer, knowing that prayer is action. We now go into these days praying for every word we have spoken tonight, that they may be done and lived in us. So with gratitude for each one of you, let us now go into these days being willing to bring the truth the only truth that can indeed set this nation in bondage free. Adam? Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Dr. Skinner. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Reverend Adam Taylor. I um, want to thank everyone that's joined us tonight. Again, um, we will be sending a video of this if you'd like to send to your churches and your networks. Uh, we'll be sending this video out later tonight. Um, it will also be at faith2020.org. And then I also want to invite you to a very special inaugural prayer service on Thursday morning. So Thursday morning at 10 a.m. at bideninaugural.org. Many of our friends and leaders on this call will be praying and lifting up with uh, then president and vice president Biden and Harris on Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern. Again, bideninaugural.org. And so as we all head off into our evenings, we keep watch, we root down, and the people say, amen. Thank you for joining us. Good night, everyone.